And you don't have to save back your light areas too much um, because you can apply the lighter values with a heavier hand as you go. If you've ever been curious about pastel painting or pastels or the process of using pastels, we have one of the best with us, Nancy King Mertz. Nancy, welcome. Thank you so much, Eric. I'm just very honored to be here and um, hope we have lots of viewers. Oh, we'll have lots of viewers. You know, by the, by the end of the day, we'll have four or 5,000 uh, wow. between all the platforms that we're on. And so you're going to have to talk about all the stuff you have for sale because you're going to have a red letter day. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> well, uh, so you're one of my favorite people. You and I got to know wow. each other at the, at the plein air convention. And then you came and uh, did a video with us and, and stayed in the world famous artist cabin. Wow. And yeah. So I, I like you very much and, okay. and uh, you're, you're kind of fun to hang out with. Well, thanks, Eric. I, I enjoy you too. And we went to Cuba together. That's actually the very first time we met was on that wonderful trip to Cuba. Oh, that's right. Oh, it was Cuba. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, were you on the first, first trip to Cuba? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that, was a, uh, that was kind of a, a monumental time because we did it at a time before we could technically, we could legally go in. Yeah. But we, you know, we kind of worked it on a loophole. We were the largest, for everybody watching, we were the largest um, art group to ever visit Cuba as a whole. And it was historic. So that was a lot of fun. It was. Yeah, we paved the way for the Pope who came right after us. And then the Obamas came right after the Pope. So we right. just kind of, you know, paved the way for Americans. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, the, we brought a lot of attention. Every the Pope was paying attention to us and wanted to come follow. Yeah. Be like, be like us. That's our trip. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun painting in the streets of Havana. Yeah, yeah, it was really terrific. So, Nancy, what are you going to show us today? Well, um, I am going to do. Well, I'm going to talk about the wonderful um, qualities of pastel, and I'm going to show you uh, my setup, and I'm going to do a quick demo. But I do have uh, signature pastel sets that the Richardson Company had me select. So I have those four sets, and I'll show you that. I call it my candy store. Um, and we sell those in our shop. Also, Judson's and Dakota sell uh, the first two sets that I did. But we sell all four sets in our shop. Um, and, you know, I just want people to realize that the pastel is the purest medium there is because it's just pure pigment compressed into a stick form so if you would grind up a pastel stick and add some linseed oil you could make oil paint so it's the same pigment that's in oil it's just dry and compressed there's so, not a bind there's not a binder of, of any uh, kind maybe of? a tiny bit uh you know when people make their own pastels which i tried once and i thought i'd never do it again uh it um you just grind a pastel you know, pastel pigment, and you can use um, uh, oh, distilled water, and that is the binder, and then you compress it into the stick. So there's really not anything that compromises the pigment in the stick. Well, I, I have to admit that I have tried it. I'm not very good at it, but you uh, graciously gave me some paper and a set of your pastels, and so that's, that was very generous of you. Well, I'm, I think that uh, the one thing I'd like to encourage everybody, whether you're an oil painter, a watercolorist, any kind of painter, or maybe you're not a painter at all, this is a really good thing to watch because you will learn something about your own medium by watching this because of Nancy's years of experience. Nancy's also a, a gallery owner, and so we will probably talk a little bit about that and, and uh, see what we can learn about that. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you uh, hop off for a minute. You can set up your other camera and for your demo, and I'm going to make some announcements, and then we will get back to you in just a couple of minutes. Right. Sound like a plan? Thanks. All right. Our guest today is Nancy King Mertz, and my name is Eric Rhodes. I am the publisher and founder of Plen Air Magazine and Fine Arts Connoisseur Magazine, both top sellers throughout the United States and actually uh, the world. Uh, Plein Air Magazine is the number one selling art magazine nationally at Barnes & Noble. Outsells all art and photography magazines. We're pretty proud of that. Uh, it took a lot of work, but we're, uh, we're happy to do work. It makes sense to do it whenever possible because 
uh, you can get good benefit. And the Plein Air magazine has a digital edition. And if you're watching from Egypt or Spain or anywhere in the world, you know, you, you can get the digital edition. You don't have to wait for the mail. And, and the digital edition has 30% more content than the, uh, than the other, uh, the print edition. So check that out. Uh, in case you're not aware of it, I do a thing called Sunday Coffee. Uh, Sunday Coffee is my, my thoughts on life, philosophy, things like that. It's, it's very little to do with art, although sometimes it's in there. And uh, I've got about a quarter million people reading it now. It comes out every Sunday. If you want to find it, it's free. Coffeewitheric.com, and you can subscribe so it comes to your mailbox. And uh, if you guys uh, are uh, subscribers to that and you're enjoying it, put your comments in the comment section so that other people can, uh, can learn about it and see if it's something that they might want. All right. I think I've made all my announcements. And uh, so we are, oh, yes, I've made all my announcements. <laughs> now we're going to go back to Nancy King Mertz. Hello, Nancy. Hi, Eric. I, you know, I'm out of breath. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> you just have so much going on. Don't know how you do it, but you do it well, and your team. Well, thank you. That's a compliment. Uh, so, Nancy, um, how did this this whole pastel thing begin for you? Were you always a pastel painter? No, I, I actually grew up as an oil painter. I started painting in oils. Um, in early high school and took extension courses from the University of Illinois, which was nearby and uh, started you know, my undergrad with some college credits. And uh, I've just studied painting all my life. So undergrad, master's degree in painting and, um, and I've had a business. Um, I, I realized that I was gonna be doing lots of painting all my life. So I started a framing business when I was in school and so I've had that business for 40 years. And so our, our business in Chicago is both a gallery and frame shop and we're open seven days a week. So wow. um, that's a big commitment. So talk to me, uh, you know, a lot of artists have this, um, this belief that they should just paint and let somebody else handle the business, which is okay. But some of them feel that, uh, you know, being in business is a compromise. What are your thoughts on that? How do they deal with this? How do they? I love the interaction with people that come in the shop, and I, I, we have wonderful staff, and I love, you know, working with them. Um, it's usually just two of us at the shop at a time because we're, you know, trying to be careful, and and uh, we don't have people flooding through the doors because we're an art gallery. So it's it's a very safe environment uh, since we have to be, you know, distanced right now. Um, I, I would really miss that. I would miss, uh, you know, like with the framing interaction, when people come in for framing, we spend maybe an hour together selecting the best option for their artwork. Um, it's, it's just really a joy to make those connections. And, and uh, you know, I have a, a huge list of clients that have been coming in all these years. So uh, our business in Chicago uh, on Clark Street has just been, we're, celebrating our 17th year in that location. But I, I have had a business first downstate where we lived when I went to school and then uh, moved to Chicago in 87. So it's, it's long in the tooth, but it's, we try to keep it fresh and um, just real dedicated to it. And my husband does prints and cards of, of my work. Um, and we, we do just sell my work in the shop because I paint a lot and we sell, uh, pastel products and so forth. So anyway, you ask when I started pastel painting, someone gave me a set of pastels in um, 1988 after I joined the palette and chisel in Chicago and um, started going out, you know, planner painting with them and realized how fast they were. So I still do both, but I just tend to grab my pastels when I'm gonna go do a planner painting. And then I reserve my oils more for my studio. So, um, and I teach pastel painting um, in Europe and uh, all across the country. So oh, you're going to be on today, actually, uh, today at three o'clock. Uh, Nancy is going to be teaching our urban pastel painting, which is an urban scene. And she's going to show how she paints this scene uh, in pastel, which is just phenomenal. And uh, it's from this video that she did with us, urban pastel painting. So Today you'll get a sample of that and get a get a chance to get a feel for that. So 
that's that's one of the ways you teach and and that's a great way for people who might not be able to attend a live workshop but what we have found is that people who buy the videos always end up wanting to go to the workshops that's great i have six zoom workshops before the middle of december this year and then i have 15 face-to-face -face workshops next year i'm hoping uh, two are in europe so I'm, I'm just hoping that we are all safe to travel and, and those can happen because I, I really love that. I'm, I'm grateful for Zoom. That's really kept us connected and, and uh, kept us painting. But um, there's just nothing like the face-to-face -face interaction. And, uh, absolutely. And absolutely. So, absolutely. so you're going to do a demo for us today. Yeah, a quick one. And, okay. you know, if we have to sign off before I'm done, that's fine. But I'll post it, the finished painting. Um, All right. Well, you you have uh, you have plenty of time. I'd say we have at least uh, at least thirty minutes, and maybe thirty five minutes. So you got plenty of time, and that's a quick demo. Quite frankly, that's that is a quick demo. Uh, everybody's watching these quick demos, and 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 we're like, how do these people do this? Well, it's, it has to do with thirty years experience, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I should start by showing you my candy store, which is oh good. Yeah, store. let's do that. So let me move the camera over there. I'll take you on a little trip across my studio. Okay. Ooh la la. Ooh, yeah, that's candy. Um, so I have on this side, I have my two sets that were chosen for the, the Florida palette when I was supposed to be teaching in the South in March. And um, I merged the two sets. So I put all the pools in one box and all the warms in another box. And then my first two sets that Richardson had me select are the urban and the atmospheric landscape set. So I merged those as well, cools in one box, warms in another box. And it's, I take one of these pairs with me when I go plein air painting or, or do a face-to-face -face workshop. So that's, they're my go-to. And then I also use their hard pastels at the finish to, you know, kind of refine and clean up some areas and so forth. What's the difference between a hard pastel and a soft pastel? Uh, well, you know, there's probably more binder in um, a hard pastel. They're just, they're very rigid. They have sharp edges and they kind of retain that sharp edge so you can get, you know, get in corners or do some windows or whatever. Um, the soft, um, can be crumbly, although the the soft pastels that Richardson's provide are are pretty sturdy. Um, and I always take the papers off. You know, it doesn't matter what color name or number to me. Um, there's a key on the back of the box, but um, I just like to use the whole stick like a brush, like a wide brush, and it helps keep me loose. Um, it it really um, celebrates the color because you're putting a swath of, of color, you know, an inch and a quarter wide on your surface. So, when you uh, when you came over to our place uh, and you gave me a piece of pastel paper, it's the first time I held it in my hand and it, it was like sandpaper. Yes, it's it's sanded paper. Um, get this camera back. Um, and uh, I use the 400 grit, which is UART paper that I dry mount because I have a frame shop, I have a dry mount press. So um, I like to have a rigid surface, especially when I'm out in the field because, you know, I don't want to mess with tape or, or things, you know, right. pop off if the tape gives way. So I, I do mount them. Um, you said you are 400 grid? Yeah, I use, it's a like the mid range grit. They have lots of, of different grits, but um, the 400 is most comfortable for me because I always tend to, flick it when I put a stroke down with my finger. And if I use something that's a little more coarse, I end up with a bloody stump. So, <laughs> so I like right. to use that mid range. And, so, and yeah. your pastels that you sell through Richardson, where do they get those? Uh, they're at our gallery. So um, if you go to my website, there's color keys. You can see what each set offers as far as color. The, Urban Set has a lot of darks that are often missing in pastel sets. The um, lush coastal foliage has lots of greens. Um, often, you know, you don't have 
natural looking greens in pastel sets. They're, they're a little harsh or, or not colors you would find in nature. So that has the greens. Um, so I, I like to work with a pair. So, you know, you can choose between the, the four as to what you want to pair together. But uh, that just gives you a nice full range of uh, pastel choices because it, with pastels, you grab the color you need. You don't take time like with oil paint or acrylic to mix the color you need. You just grab it and you right. can layer it and you have to kind of practice your application because the, the, um, the lighter the pastel value, the heavier you can apply it. So you work dark to light like you do with oil, try to keep the darks transparent and, you know, don't use a lot of pressure. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that. And also um, I wash them in with denatured alcohol. So that, Kind of makes it you know cohesive dark that i can quickly layer over with mid-range values and then the lights go on top so that's my dessert is there any drying time when you have to do that uh the denatured alcohol is actually a fuel so it's um uh, it's 99 percent alcohol and it dries more quickly than anything else i've tried more quickly than turpentine water rubbing alcohol it's just pure fuel so it dries very quickly, especially if you're in a, a dry or warm climate. It, it just immediately evaporates. So you have to keep it in a closed container um, when you're not using it or it'll, it'll all dry up. So Okay, cool. Well, you have viewers today from Cozumel, from Sweden, from Saudi Arabia. Wow. I haven't even gotten through the list yet, but uh, got, got people all over America, of course. Philippines. Hello, Philippines. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, that's very neat. Okay. Now what I want everybody to do, if you, if you want your friends to know about Nancy and about pastel, make sure you hit the share button. Ah, there's Hazel from New Zealand. Wow. Terrific. Wow. So share this so that your friends, because we, we all tend to have artist friends on social media for artists. And so make sure your friends see it so they can join in. Hello, France. Wow. This is terrific. And uh, even Texas. <laughs> Your okay. well, let, you, you talked about this denatured alcohol thing why don't we um okay. why don't we get to your demo let's try it have a All little right. demo here so my husband's manning the cameras he's going to switch so we can see up close what i'm going to do so um i went ahead and i always start with what i call a tick mark map with uh vine charcoal so it's just a quick like five minute sketch to help me get the design and uh, perspective. And, you know, you don't want to put your too much detail in, in the beginning because you're going to paint over it. So um, I always say you have to build the wall before you put the cabinets on. So, you know, save your detail as your reward. So I see um, a lot of pink in the sky uh, behind the blue. So I'm going to start with a little pink and um, uh, everything will get washed in. So that's, I'm kind of breaking my rule in that I always start with the darks, but I, I do want that to be part of the um, underpainting. So, I love the structure of bridges and uh, the L, I paint the L a lot in Chicago. And I feel that the, the negative space is just as important as the, the positive space. I think it's interesting that you're drawing with the side of the pastel. I, I think our tendency would be to draw it like we would a pencil. Yeah, a lot of people use the tip and so they end up with just little fussy marks. And I try to encourage my students to use, you know, use your hand, use your arm. and Use the whole stick and think of it as a brush instead of, you know, a, a pencil or, or drawing tool. Think of it more as a brush you're painting with. I love watching you do this. This is fascinating. <laughs> okay. So I, the reason I did the tick mark map in advance is just because this is to be a short demo and I didn't want to take additional time to do that. So Sure, yeah. 
but when I do a, a typical demo, it, I you know start with a fresh surface. So you're trying to get your you typically lay in your darks first. Yes. So always work dark to light with pastel, and you don't have to save back your light areas too much, um, because you can apply the lighter values with a heavier hand as you go. Now you you haven't put any alcohol on yet, is that right? Not yet, I've got to get the the base in here to actually wash it in. I see. So if there's nothing there to wash in, it's you know you don't want to use alcohol at this point. Hey, one of our uh, one of our uh, watchers, viewers, what uh -huh. viewers? It, Pat is sitting in the uh, inner place in Alabama, waiting for the hurricane to hit. Oh God, so, uh, Pat, we're going to all keep you in our prayers, and then yes. those of you in the path of the hurricane, uh, we're thinking about you. And prayers for California and Oregon and Washington. Oh my goodness! Oh. Yeah, in the world. So we've got Brazil now. Uh, we've got France now. Italy. All right, you guys we've got the world coming in. I was supposed to paint in France this year and have an exhibition and paint in the gardens in Giverny. And of course that had to be canceled. You know, the, uh, the gardens in Giverny, the, the board got together and they decided they're no longer going to let artists paint in Giverny. So that's so it, supposedly that's over forever. Well, they, they did give me special permission, so I don't they, know. Oh, good. Well, I hope it's, I hope that's true. Yeah, so, so I just heard from another artist who had permission, and then they they just found out that it was revoked. Oh dear! Well, so everything check on that. Was supposed to happen there this year was moved to next year, so I'm just hoping that. Yeah. You know. They'll well, that's been one of my dreams. I've never painted. I've been to Giverny, but I've never painted there, and I've always wanted to spend a week painting. Okay. So if so it happens, I may have to come over and and paint with you, Nancy. Oh, that would be so fun. It would be fun. So fun. Well, now that my kids are in college, uh, other than this You're darn free. thing that they call work, uh, <laughs> then I could go do that stuff. Egypt. Hello, Egypt. So I'm going to apply the alcohol now. So I'm using a Richeson number no. six gray matters fan brush. Now, these I want to explain that gray matters because I think that's important. That you show, hold that brush up real quickly. So no, where we can see it, hold it right in front of your painting. There we go. So that part on the end, the gray, the silver part, uh, which is, what is that called? A feral? Feral, uh-huh. Feral. Uh, those are typically either gold or silver. And what uh, Jack Richardson did is he made them gray so that when you're outdoors plenty of painting, they don't reflect in your eyes. So now you're just going over it with. Yes. This is the denatured alcohol. So it, it becomes an absolute mess. And I when I'm out, you're ruining all that beautiful brushwork. This is going to be my underpainting. So when I'm out painting uh, plein air and people are watching and, you know, they're excited about what I'm doing and I do this step here, <laughs> they just walk away shaking their heads like, oh, no, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just run it. So we let that dry. And um, the... The underpainting with the fan brush is really helpful when doing cityscapes because often the underpainting, if you control it, you know, keep it vertical, that often helps you determine uh, where the uh, buildings are, you know, the windows in the building, and you can carve around the underpainting at times with the positive space to show the a wall with multiple windows without having to draw the windows in. Uh -huh. Also, this is this is kind of a straight on view, but um, you know, if you're doing something with a lot of perspective, you can use your brush and continue with the perspective in the correct direction with your underpainting. And that can help you keep your drawing on track. Okay. So, all right, I'm going to start in with this sky. Well, that's, that's dry already. Pretty darn close. Yeah. Wow. And what would happen if it was still wet and you laid pastel with, on top it of it? It would um, kind of scar the paper a little bit and just make a kind of a blobby 
mess. So I, I think of these, you know, the bridge formations and so forth as kind of calligraphy in the sky. It's what I like to call it. I notice you're taking your finger once in a while and just doing some smearing. Yeah. Is that still in or is that just to kind of keep things from being completely even? It softens an edge. So when you're, you know, drawing a structure, you don't want all the edges to be hard. You know, you need to have some soft edges. Right. How much plein air painting do you do versus... Uh, photographic painting. Well, until this year, I would say about 70%. Um, really? And I do about 150 paintings a year. Wow. So, um, but this year, you know, our, our plein air group in Chicago hasn't really been able to go out. Um, they tried to go out one time and people just kept coming up to them. They, we have t-shirts. And in fact, you talked about it one time t-shirts that say my painting looks best from six feet away <laughs> <laughs> but people didn't read the t-shirts and they would hang up you know over their shoulder and it was just it's not safe to do that so anyway the rest of our season was canceled you have one of the most active and Thank impressive you. plein air groups in america in chicago thanks to mary long and her yeah. group of people that are dedicated great we, leadership yeah so uh, how are you making sure that that underpainting continues to show through? Well, you can layer easily with pastel. So on the lighter, I can see it pulling through. I can't see it as much on the dark, but maybe it's there. Yeah. And you have to go back often and, you know, fill in a bit with the darks because, um, you know, as your painting develop, develops, you realize that you need to go with a darker value. I want to do this. I, you've got me already. Got you've got me. Enthused. <laughs> I, like, I don't have my set here in the Adirondacks. I have it back in uh, Texas, but I may just go online and, and, and buy a set and get it up here so I can try it with the fall color. Oh, yeah. I can ship today. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Nancy's going to be doing a full, uh, you're going to see a video of her painting pastel today at three o'clock at uh, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, if you search streamline art video, in case you didn't hear that. So I noticed you laid down a touch of color and then you realized it wasn't the color you wanted. Yes. And, you know, it's easy to pick up another one and, and paint over your goof. So because of this, the pigment strength of this, could you, even a lighter color, could you lay it down over a darker color and feel like it's going to give it good coverage? Yeah, so that you work dark to light. And so you keep the darks kind of transparent. And um, at the end, you can just really grind in the lighter pigments so you know i make my easel dance sometimes towards the end as i'm putting in these lighter pigments so i mara, mara kelper says she's got a t-shirt that says social distancing is my superpower <laughs> <laughs> good for her it's so easy to forget you know when you what is the brand of paper that you're using? This is UART paper. UART. Okay. UART, yeah. Okay. And the purpose of the alcohol wash, somebody's asking, is just to kind of unify things. Is that it right? Is, yeah. And it, it helps make those darks transparent. So even, um, you know, small little areas, I'm still using the side of the 
the pastel. Yeah. I that. It's easy to correct. How much pressure are you putting on the press really hard or is it very light touch? It's pretty light touch because I again I'm working with the dark so I want to try to keep that pressure light so that I can paint over if I need to. And um, what if you want to erase something? Is it possible? It is. Um actually a, one of my students introduced me to um an old pink pearl eraser <laughs> those long skinny ones we used to use in school yeah the pink pearls um you can erase with with those really but i just paint over you know if i make a mistake yeah, if you make a mistake paint over it's kind of like oil paint same thing yeah Uh, someone's asking, could you use this underpainting technique with oil pastel? You know, I don't know. I've I've really not used oil pastel. It, oil pastel is not typically accepted in the the pastel world as far as competitions. Um, there might be a few that that do, but like Pastel Society of America, you know, it has to be eighty percent or more of pure pastel to be accepted. So um, I I did buy, we were in Roussillon, France one time, and this couple had these amazing paintings that they had done with oil pastel. So I, I bought their sets of pastels and it was hot and I had a gooey mess on my hands trying to paint with those. So what's, there's a, obviously a debate about art materials and, and you know, your skin. Uh, what about the idea you're, you're painting without gloves? Some people paint with gloves. The other thing is, uh, what about pastel dust? Are, are there any health issues that we need to be aware of or thinking about? Well, like any, any material, you know, you have to be careful. There are, it's the, it's pigments and, uh, you know, there aren't really chemicals in use. It's just the, the pigments and the dust from that. Um, a lot of people have those fans that collect the pastel at the bottom to clean out their studio. And that's a, a great thing to have. I, I don't have it, but it's a, a great safety measure. This is yummy. I oh, really am loving this. <laughs> oh, thanks. You know, it, it, I don't want to sound insulting, but it just kind of reminds me of crayons as a kid, and it just it's very appealing. Yeah, well, if you like to draw too, it, yeah. you know, it's a real it's a drawing medium, even though they're called paintings. Um, for anyone who loves to draw, I think pastels are the great medium for them to use how's our time you're doing okay it's uh you've got i'd say about 12 minutes yet okay so that i don't it's crazy i don't have that cobalt so much in my kit it's not a color i use very often but but i can layer over and, and try to achieve that color yeah it looks it looks more, more like an indigo in the photo yeah. from here So 
So you typically will take out fewer pastels when you go um, plein air painting, I assume. Well, each set is 80, and I, you know, have merged two sets. So I go out with 160. Wow, that's a lot. And uh, I've made a box that they, that the two sets fit in, that, you know, the boxed sets fit in this little table that I made out of Coraplast. And I put a, a, a quick coupler on the bottom and I just snap it right onto my tripod. Oh, you'll have to show us that if you get time. I don't know if you have oh, it handy. Okay. It's, it's kind of funky. It's really... Funky is good. <laughs> it's duct tape and coroplast. Yeah. Well, that's what duct tape's made for. <laughs> and do you, do you spray something to preserve this at some point? I do not. Um, the spray really does dull the color. So I, I don't use fixative. Um, you know, I protect it with glassine or pop it right into a frame when I'm done. Um, when I participate in plein air events, you know, we have to have our, our frame and so forth. So I have, you know, the, I've cut the panel to fit the frame. I've cut the glass and then I just pop it right in. Okay. So that was my next question. You use glass. Right. Yeah. And I use AR glass, which is anti-reflective. Um, okay. if, if you use really good pastels, you don't have to worry about UV protection. So you don't have to use museum glass. The AR glass looks like museum because it disappears, but it you don't have that added expense. Yeah, that's pretty expensive stuff. Yeah. All right. So we got a few minutes yet and you, depending on how your people would love to see your your uh your plein air outfit. So Okay, so you want me to show you that now? No, I want you to, to work on this a few more minutes, and then you can show it to me. This is too too much fun. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm having fun. Yeah, so are we. We got a pretty pretty sizable audience today. Oh, great. Yeah. Somebody says, this is fascinating. I've never seen pastel painting done. Does it feel like chalk on a blackboard? Well, that's a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> what, chalk or blackboard? <laughs> we try to, to discourage people from calling it chalk. Um, it's, you know, it's pure compressed pigment, but it does look like what you use in a classroom. And it does look like what is used on a sidewalk. But those, that chalk is actually limestone and dye. So there's nothing permanent about it. All right. Hello, Costa Rica. Today is their Independence Day. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to take a group down to Costa Rica. I, I'm very curious about it. So I'm going to go down there and paint. Go there. Put me on the list. <laughs> okay. You're going to go to Russia with us? I'm thinking about it. Ron keeps telling me I need to go. So, yeah. Well, that's it's good to have somebody supportive like that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, when I paint those small villages in Russia, it it is it it's like going back two hundred years. Oh. These people have no water, so they you know they carry buckets of water and they're in their babushka outfits carrying the buckets of water, and I'm drawing and snapping photos and everything as much as I can. Cause it's so romantic looking, you know, the, 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 and the, in the, in the distance, you got these, these old churches and that's just really pretty. You would have, a, you'd have a lot of fun with the architecture of all the colorful. Oh, oh yeah. It's Mexico's independence day too. I see here. Yeah. There were big parades downtown yesterday. Uh, the, somebody's asking when the Russia trip is. It's a year from now. Uh, it's about this time next year. Go to paintrussia.com. I'll put it in the comments. We don't have the pricing on there yet, uh, but it's going to be expensive. Um, 
as international trips tend to be, but it, it's going to be well worth it. And, uh, we're trying to, we were talking this morning about it, trying to figure out how to get the, the prices as far down as we can. Ooh, now, oh. Wow, I love the way you were able to blend that. Yeah, so the, often people use the hards to start to do their block in and so forth, but I save them for the, the end. Yeah. Uh, just kind of use them, you know, as I kind of shove some of the soft pastel out of the way and Ooh. just use a, a hard stroke. Well, it's nice. You could see how you, you know, you really wanted to lay in and draw attention to that yellow and you just, just really laid it in hard, more pressure. Yeah. Oh, that's just beautiful. Thank you. How fun. How's our time? Well, we're just going to keep going. No, oh. <laughs> um, we're, we're at, uh, we probably should stop in about four minutes. Okay. So just lay in some of those reflections and then we're going to, we're going to go see your plein air kit real quickly. Okay. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have, uh, please put something in the comments. I'm sure we would love, Nancy would love to see your comments. She'll yeah. check them later uh, tonight. And remember, you can win something in the comments. Uh, today we're giving away a... Um, A what? <laughs> I dropped out for a second. I apologize. Uh, today we're giving away a digital subscription to Plein Air Magazine for tomorrow. So make sure you leave a comment. If you're from outside of the country, say where you're from. We like hearing that. It's kind of fun to see an international audience. Okay. So if I need a black, I sometimes use the the charcoal again just to get a soft black. I don't have black in my set. I have very dark pigments, but not actually a black. So. Right. Is that a bridge in Chicago? It is. Um, we've bought groupons where you can take a little electric boat out on the river and uh -huh. go down into these interesting interesting industrial areas chicago is a great town yeah it is i went to college in chicago for a minute oh for a minute yeah i didn't stay long i found out that that was just not for me but no i went to north park college Oh, yeah. Over at North Park and Kedzie. Okay, okay, so this still needs work, but I will show you my... Good. I was just going to say, it's time to go to that. Uh, applause, thumbs up, <laughs> positive reactions. That was really terrific. <clears throat> and I think I'll switch to the other camera. Just okay, good. A little more clear. All right. There we go. All right. So no beauty, but um, anyway, the quick coupler is on the back. I put a piece of thin wood and secured it with through the washers. with washers and screws. And it just snaps right on my my tripod and I can Open, take the lids off my two boxes and start painting immediately. So it's very, very. And what do you put? What do you put your canvas on? I have a separate easel for that. You do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Terrific. And then the Velcro holds holds the lids on because that's you got to have the lids secured or you've got a big mess on your hands. Yeah. And 
slides into my rolling cart and I I check this when I travel by plane. Just perfect. You know, and I, Oh, Nancy, ahead. will you do us a favor and and when you finish that painting, I know you're you, you're going to finish it because somebody will buy it. Oh, but um, when you finish that, if you'll come back in to post it into the comments, oh, sure. so that we can see it, uh, you know, later today, tonight, tomorrow, whenever, and okay. that'd be really nice. Okay, happy to All do right. that. Well, thank you, Nancy. I appreciate you doing this today. Oh, I appreciate you asking. Yeah, well, we'll have you back again. It's fascinating. I could do this all day. Unfortunately, my I've got a tough boss, and he's going to make me go to work today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Eric, be safe.